We're continuing our video series on installing VMware ESXi with Nextit Virtualization. Uh, this is a again a video series that was inspired by Jonathan Faper's excellent series on installing a complex VMware vSphere lab. You can find the whole series right up at vertexpert.com. In this video, we're going to install VMware ESXi, a template similar to what we did with Windows Server. Quick, quick overview on the requirements for this lab. You're going to need a system that has AMD V, RVI, or Intel VT-X or EPT. This is basically processor level helpers for virtualization which allows us to have nested VMs. So we're going to run VMware ESXi inside of VMware Workstation and on the ESXi host themselves we're going to eventually run VMs and we need that special hardware to do that. Uh, most uh, modern day processors just as long as you're buying anything above the Celeron series will support that in the Intel world. Then we'll need PuTTY for SSH access to our ESXi environment as well as VMware Workstation 5, 7 or better. And if you're using Fusion, I believe this uh, lab work in uh, VMware Fusion 5 or better. My system has 24 gig of RAM, a 240 gigabyte SSD. I'm using the Intel 8 core i7 processor. Let's get started with the lab. First, we're gonna create a new virtual machine. So this is very much similar to how we started off our Windows Server 2012 R2 install. There's really not much different. The install is going to be very cookie cutter. If you've installed ESXi before, there's really not much special about this install. Again, we're going to keep the template on our SSD, which again is the as a reminder in an earlier video, the ideal for having the template on the SSD when we create linked clones, the performance of the linked clones will be much improved versus having it on our spinning disk. We'll select defaults. Once the install is complete, we're going to go ahead and enable SSH so that we can PuTTY to our ESXi server. We're going to hit F2. Log in as our root user. We'll go ahead and enter full screen mode so we can navigate better. We'll find the SSH options under troubleshooting op options. We're going to enable SSH. Now that SSH is, go to our main screen and we'll note the IP address of 192.168.112.131. And that's the IP world SSH2 to install our VMware tools. Once we've launched PuTTY, we'll go ahead and put in the IP of the SSH server, which is our ESXi host. Connect. We'll accept, of course, we're not using any kind of certificate, so we'll ignore the security warnings. Log in as root. And if we have internet access, we can go ahead and download the latest version of the ESXi VMware tools. We successfully installed the latest VMware tools. Now, Jonathan goes through the steps of installing a fling that's required if you're doing this in an ESXi host itself. So we're running VMware Workstation on Windows 7. This is the fling that he installed is necessarily in our lab. But if you're doing this on an ESXi physical host, I suggest you visit his website and install that additional fling. To recap it and clean up our work, we've installed ESXi within VMware Workstation. 
and we've installed VMware tools as well. The one thing that we do want to enable that we do is to go back to our ESXi host and disable SSH because it's best security practices. Even though we're in the lab, we want to at least make sure we get into the routines of practicing good security. And that would also, rec I also recommend that you, at this point, if you've not already done so, that you document your passwords. I couldn't tell you how many times, two months later, I've come back to a lab and I have not remembered the password. So document your password as well as your networking. In our next lab, when we create our ESXi clone, we'll overview the existing network, make the changes to our network that we're gonna use actually throughout my version of the lab.